My name's Mike Godzi. I'm the GM at Infura. Uh, we're a product inside of the Consensus family. Um, so very happy to be here. Also, thank you for having us. You know, we have um, we've been committed to IPFS for for almost four years now, and uh, it is it's been such a core part of our product. And and working with the Protocol Labs team has always been such a pleasure. It's it's uh, really exciting to to present this today. So the presentation today basically going to go through um, how uh, Infura got formed and, and what motivated us to start uh, working with IPFS, uh, talk a little bit about what our offering is today, and then talk um, a little bit about where we're going from here. Um, so uh, Infura, like I said, Infura launched four years ago. Um, uh, originally as an Ethereum API provider for projects inside of Consensus. So basically we saw the problem with uh, hosting Ethereum infrastructure and, and it becoming a blocker for core developers trying to build experiences on top of, of Ethereum. And so we, we decided to start hosting the infrastructure and serving that over an API to make it even easier to access Ethereum. Um, so that, that meant offering a standard API that was exactly the same as if you were right, running your own uh, Ethereum nodes. Uh, this made it super easy for interoperability um, and, and just kind of getting the infrastructure out of the way of the developer so that they could build really fast um, and really cool experiences. So uh, this, uh, this proved to be really uh, an awesome thing for developers. It, it really uh, showed its value very early on and, and it has been growing continuously ever since then. Um, uh, we, we officially launched uh, at DevCon 2 um, with MetaMask being uh, one of our first use cases, early adopters. Um, and it was, it was a really awesome combination of here's your window into experiencing this Web3 technology and, and and having the confidence that it's running on infrastructure that uh, that really it was bulletproof. Um, so, what, so this you know this this really this discovery this kind of led us to our mission. Um, you know, we started very early on with this thesis of of if we can make building on Ethereum as easy as possible, then we can help push this new era of the internet uh, forward. Um, and, and this was, and so this really became our core mission statement of, we wanna deliver the absolute best infrastructure and developer tools for, for people to, to build web three applications. Um, and, and, and this mission statement kind of led us to uh, a question of, okay, you know, Web3 is broad and, and, and application uh, requirements is, is equally as broad. And so, it, you know, Ethereum was great for computation, great for, uh, you know, assets and, and all of the intricacies of smart contracts um, and, and, and as the space settlement layer, but that left us asking the question of what, what about storage? Um, and, and how can we create a complete Web3 development suite uh, without a storage solution. And, th and this is what, this is really what led us to IPFS. Um, so IPFS uh, really kind of came in and, and, and immediately started solving that problem for, uh, for developers trying to build a complete um, a Web3 application. Uh, decentralized distributed application. And, and so in a lot of ways, you can look at it as the, the, the analogy of S3 to EC2. Um, so we, we really wanted to kind of create this entire package so you could go to one place and really have this, this, uh, the tools to build this distributed application. Um, and so uh, we set up one of the very first uh, gateway and API uh, services, um, and and ever since then we've seen a, a ton of developers um, using this service, uh, asking us questions about it, uh, and and all of us kind of growing together around you know what people need, how they need to access it, what the issues with it are, 
um, and, and kind of exploring the, the spectrum of use cases uh, with this awesome community. Um, so when we launched this, we decided that you know, this was going to be free, just like our Ethereum API. Um, we thought that uh, getting developers to start building on this was, was uh, the right first step and then moving towards um, offering uh, additional value on top of that, that developers were really going to want to, you know, spend money on. Um, and so, uh, so this kind of takes me to where are we now? Um, so that was, that's, that was kind of the past and, and what led to, to, to us starting uh, in FIRA and our IPFS support and our Ethereum support. And so, so what are we now is, is, is in a lot of ways, we are a, a, a robust API and gateway for accessing IPFS. Um, so what does this mean for developers? Um, developers can pin and access their pin data directly via our API, and they can access any data across the network um, uh, directly via our gateway and our API for that matter. Um, so it, right now, it's a, it is a limited set of API functionality. So uh, you know, things like delete um, are not currently supported because it is fully open authentication. So this basically meant that we, since, since the inception of this feature and support, it was super important to us to, to maximize people's ability to experiment on this technology. Um, and so, so we left it open authentication to really drive that experimentation. Um, and, and we've seen such cool use cases uh, built on top of it uh, because of that. Um, and, and, and researchers and, and education uh, programs and uh, all of these, uh, these early ecosystem necessities were able to build on top of this and really push um, the adoption forward. Um, so we have our full documentation at uh, infura.io. This is a little bit of a screenshot of that to kind of show you all of the methods that we support. Um, and, and this is kind of the state of now. The, one of the other big things uh, in our current services is because we're so deeply ingrained inside of the Go IPFS client, um, this has allowed us to contribute to the open source libraries and, and, and write our own open source libraries to help accelerate um, the client as well as uh, the other developers and operators in the ecosystem. So two of the tools that we built are IPFS pump. Um, so this is a command line tool uh, to be able to copy data between IPFS nodes, cluster or storage. So it makes it extremely easy to, to shift data from node to node, from cluster to cluster. Or, or any other type of storage uh, solution that you have for your, your Go IPFS client. Um, and then the other tool that we built is uh, our Go IPFS Datadog plugin. Um, and so I'll talk a, a little bit more about this in, in, in the next couple slides, but um, you know, we, we uh, the, the Infura team uh, comes from a, a heavy background of, of infrastructure, SRE, um, uh, production grade uh, DevOps kind of uh, engineering. And, and so, you know, integrating with the latest and greatest of operational tools uh, is super important to us. And we realized that by, by open sourcing these connections, especially for Datadog, because it's such a valuable tool for, for operational metrics, um, that, that this would help our operators across the entire ecosystem and make this technology even more accessible. So what it, so, so a few, few numbers, everyone likes numbers. Um, so we have over 40 million unique objects uh, currently supported on our service. Um, so uh, uh, to, be, to be clear that pinned, pinned data and objects are a bit different because pinned data can be um, broken down into multiple objects uh, for, for um, more efficient storage. Um, so uh, the, one, the, you know, the more exciting one on here is we, we have over two terabytes of data transfer every single day. 
So there's two over two terabytes of, of data either being added or being accessed through our service every single day. Um, <clears throat> and this has been consistent for years now. Um, and then we have, like I said, part of our, you know, our mission is to, to be contributing to these open source uh, libraries that, that build this ecosystem. Um, and, and in that mission, we, we, we had 25 plus unique contributions and PRs to the, the version uh, 0.5 of Go IPFS. Um, and, and a lot of these were, um, uh, a lot of these were around performance and bug fixing, reusability, enhancements of, uh, of domains and data storage pinning and, and the DHT. So we're, our, our team is, is deeply, uh, passionate about in, in improving and offering this service, uh, uh, for everyone in the ecosystem. Um, and, and this has really been possible because of our, con our, our collaboration with the Protocol Labs team. Um, they're engineering uh, a group for the Go IPFS client. Their, uh, their communication with us has been absolutely stellar. They're always extremely easy to get in touch with. We're iterating with them all the time on, on improvements in the client and and metrics that we're seeing from an operational standpoint. Um, so this is this has been a, a really critical partnership for us to offer this service. So a little bit about our current architecture. Um, so we utilize uh, specialized services um, uh, to to create greater scaling and efficiency and reliability. Um, and so this is. This is actually, we've taken a very similar architectural approach to IPFS that we have for Ethereum. And so that's, that's basically uh, zooming in on the client and going, what are the core systems here? And then splitting those out to be cloud optimized so that we can not only uh, individually uh, optimize and scale, uh, but we can individually operate and, and, and uh, monitor each of these unique systems so that we can hone in on issues or, or operational uh, problems that we're seeing uh, in real time 24-7. Uh, and, and so this has, this has led us to um, having shared services across multiple nodes. So we run a, a, a kind of a number of, mul of Go IPFS clients those have services that they share that kind of increase the data resiliency for our users and allow it to scale really easily up and down. Um, and so one of the really cool systems that we have is, it is a standalone system for publishing data um, on the DHT, uh, which makes it much, much more uh, uh, performance rich um, for uh, getting data to and from the peer-to-peer -peer network. Uh, so this is, that's been a, a really awesome system that we're really excited to release here soon. So what's next? Um, so this is, this is the stuff that we're really excited about. Um, so at, at ETH Denver, I actually uh, chose to talk about IPFS um, and uh, the Ethereum crowd uh, tolerated that. <laughs> so uh, I, I, I talked about that we were, we were in, the, in the process of working on an uh, IPFS premium product. Um, and so uh, name pending, uh, this is the, the most immediate thing that's coming um, from Infura is, is, is IPFS plus. So this is a premium version of our, um, of our current IPFS service uh, with with a, a much greater expanded API and, and gateway functionality to to not only augment the complete set that is offered by the Go IPFS client, but to to offer almost the com the complete functionality uh, that that a if you were running your own client uh, that you would have. Um, so this is going to be fully integrated inside of our Infura dashboard. Um, so where you go right now to set up your, uh, your API credentials and, and view stats and metrics and all the latest news and features on Ethereum, 
that's going to be 100% supported for IPFS as well. So you're going to have um, a file, you're going to have a pin explorer so that you can see exactly what you have in the service. You're going to see metrics and data on every single thing that you're doing um, and, and, and a much more robust documentation um, that is going to share a lot with the protocol labs documentation. Um, and then uh, unique project settings for IPFS so that you have the, the specific control and functionality on how your IPFS API or gateways are able to be used. And so that can broaden the actual use cases for, um, for people using the service. As, as you can imagine, this comes with a huge architecture update, um, releasing things like the publishing service that I talked about, but a lot of other uh, changes to our architecture as well to support this kind of enhanced API and gateway functionality. Um, and so the other thing that I want to mention is, is you know, as our, our you know, we, we frame IPFS as storage, but we really look at it as broader than that. And, and our goal is to, to fully support distributed applications. And this really means going beyond storage and uh, as the primary use case for IPFS. And a lot of these features are gonna facilitate that and, and be the, the foundation for um, enhanced features as well that go, that go beyond storage. So you can think um, some of the developers that, uh, that we've been talking to and, and having back and forth around their usage and, and what things they need what we're learning is that there's some really amazing opportunities with messaging. There's some amazing opportunities with domain registries, obviously. Um, and so we're really looking into all of these to, to have, to enhance our full Web3 development suite, utilizing the massive potential of IPFS. So I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't present today without saying something about Filecoin. Um, we are actively in discussions with the protocol labs team about how uh, all of the interesting ways that we can utilize Filecoin inside of our infrastructure. Um, we're exploring direct ways to connect our current offering with Filecoin rock. We're, we're exploring specific Filecoin um, functionality uh, that would be separate from our IPFS uh, functionality. And so this is all still very much in progress, but I wanted to mention it here because it's, it's super important to us and, uh, and we're very excited and, and looking forward to sharing more about that with the community soon. So that is kind of, that's a, that's a brief look into, into where we are and, and where we're going. Um, we have a really awesome community uh, at community.infura.io. Uh, we've got developers in there every single day asking questions, um, talking about IPFS, talking about Ethereum, talking about how they're connecting IPFS and Ethereum. Um, so definitely go there, contribute. If you have questions, um, if you have specific features that you're interested in or functionality, or if, or if you have a use case that you're just like, man, it would be so awesome if Infura could help me support this, just reach out to us. We're, we're, um, we're super responsive. Um, I personally am in the community all day, every day, uh, talking to people. Um, so definitely reach out and thanks. Awesome. Thank you so much for the amazing talk, Mike. Um, very excited for, for the stuff you guys have in the works, both on the, the IPFS and Filecoin interface of things. So does anyone have, have questions for Mike? What's been the toughest challenge serving IPFS data? So I think, so I invited EG here today to ask some, to answer some of the more uh, complicated engineering questions, but I, I think um, I'll take a stab at this at, at first and then EG hop in if, if you have some, some additional thoughts. Um, I think the hardest thing has really just been um, the, the, the volume, um, the amount of people that, that uh, that we are serving and, and kind of growing as the client is growing as well has been has has definitely been a challenge, but 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 in a good way because the, the what what's been really awesome about the ecosystem is that people are extremely understanding that you know we're offering a service for something that's very new um, and and 
we're still trying to uh, to to figure out what what um, what people need, what what a real scaling version of this service is that can support you know hundreds of thousands of developers at, uh, every single day. So I think that that is probably my simple answer. I don't know if if eg you have anything else to add to that. Oh yeah. Hey, I can unmute. Cool. Uh, hey everybody. Yeah. Um, one thing that's been interesting is, uh, the, the very use cases that people have had for pinning IPFS data. And, you know, early on we didn't support, uh, different things, right? So maybe we expected people to be deploying static sites and then all of a sudden somebody was building like a chat server implementation on top of it or all of a sudden somebody was trying to build a distributed database on top of it. And uh, the things that, that pop up when you realize that our, our assumptions with how people were going to be consuming data from this API didn't really hold up and then how you adjust to that. And then, and then yeah, just, uh, just the uh, different scaling issues that had come up when um, uh, you know, some things that kind of stand out is uh, because we didn't have authentication on our API early on, um, we didn't always know who was using our API and where this new traffic source was coming from. So uh, I remember specifically when DTube started sending us a bunch of traffic um, and we were like, why did all of a sudden our, our uh, data transfer just explode, right? And um, so, you know, th those are fun problems to solve. Um, and then, uh, uh, there was one other one. Um, I just blank. Yeah, uh, th those are the first couple that come to mind. That's awesome. Definitely, definitely, it's a good sort of problem where you're like, "Ooh, we had some things we probably would have fixed before uh, before we hit this 10x increase if we'd uh, if we'd known about it ahead of time." So one of the exciting challenges about working in distributed distributed systems uh, suddenly you get a lot of traffic. Question from about DMCA's or other takedown. <laughs> uh, from my recollection, we've only gotten one or two. Um, but EG, you, you're better to speak to this one. Uh, yeah, we we have only gotten a couple. I'm surprised we haven't gotten more. Um, my my wife works for a studio uh, in uh, and deals with anti piracy and things like that, and knowing the types of things that the types of tools that she has available to um, herself for, you know, managing these types of relationships with um, content publishers and providers. Uh, I think it's something that, that we as a community can try to get ahead of and provide those because it's, it's going to come uh, as, as people start posting more and more content to, um, to this network. Um, we can get ahead of it and have those tools and it'll ultimately help adoption and help these uh, enterprises and existing uh, establishment communities understand that this is great technology and it's not something to be afraid that we have the tools to help them still run their businesses. Another great question. What tooling would make your lives easier, better as infrastructure providers? Um, if groups were, were to build, build tooling for you, what would be on your wish list? Oh man. <laughs> Glad. Uh... I think, you know, we, like I said in, in the talk, you know, we have such a strong working relationship with the protocol, with, with your team, with the protocol labs team, um, that, you know, like, I think uh, our, our engineers who are working on these problems every single day, are, are, it's extremely easy to kind of uh, reach out and be like, hey, uh, we found this and it's not working. And, and what, what do you think we should do? And, and honestly, that, that's the number one support that we would love for that to continue. Um, uh, but I think like specific uh, feature wise, um, I, I, I don't have anything off the top of my head. Um, I'd be interested in if, uh, EG, you have any thoughts on that one? Yeah, nothing, nothing comes to mind off the top of my head um, in terms of, tooling that I really feel has been lacking. Definitely the developer support from um, the core development team has been really essential when, you know, we run into issues with, you know, performance on the DHT side or 
strange behavior of, of nodes that we're seeing in production, just really having that communication loop with, with the core development team has been really valuable. Um, I'd have to think more about a specific tooling. Um, let's see, the other question, uh, a lot of usage in China, we definitely get usage, uh, I'm not sure, uh, I don't have the stats in front of me in terms of like what that volume would be, so I'm not sure, maybe Mike, do you, do you have a rough idea? Yeah, we don't, we, we try not to hone too far in on, on how um, regional and like demographic based uh, analysis of our users, um, because we just, it, doesn't usually help us drive good product decisions, whereas kind of functionality and, and talking to developers and seeing about the problems that they have has really kind of driven what we think is important from an analysis standpoint. So we we do see uh, we do see traffic from China, but I, I wouldn't be able to say what percentage it is. Um, and so one other thing I, I did want to say about the, you know, what um, and it's not really it's not really an engineering solution, but I think um, you know what we are seeing is uh, as as uh, providers of of kind of this Web three tooling is that the the number one uh, things that that drive uh, new people into the ecosystem is education, and and so really kind of. Uh, you know, the more and more as an ecosystem that we can work together to um, to provide uh, learning material on on how to use this and why to use it and interesting use cases for it. Um, that that is kind of where we're we're shifting a ton of our focus, uh, especially on the marketing side, away from kind of traditional marketing and, and, and much more towards kind of top of the funnel education, really teaching people the, the power of these tools. Um, and so, so uh, ecosystem wide, not even just, you know, the development teams at protocol labs, but just as a, as an entire ecosystem, I think it's going to be our, our responsibility at the forefront of this to, to really teach people the, the breadth of these tools.